Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Yep, in the bullpen today, we have Captain Kevin Mac McGovern, United States Navy retired. We're talking about a few things. Uh, critical race theory and maybe Russia, Ukraine, if we have the time to get to it. He is also a congressional candidate in Central Florida. All right, Captain, thank you for being on the show. How are you? Thank you, Doctor. I'm doing great today. All right, so let's talk about critical race theory first. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about critical race theory uh, as it relates to K through 12 education in particular. <laughs> uh, so if you would give us your sentiment and I will opine. Sure, and we'll focus on that K through 12. And as you know, in Florida, that's been a hot topic. It was a hot topic out in Virginia. Um, K through 12, you know, there's so much misinformation on both sides. Okay. And for the proponents and the opponents of, of CRT and what is called CRT. And what I mean by that is, you know, it, when you look at the top level of CRT, it is a, it, it's a study. Uh, and, and it, it it tries to explain a lot of our issues with racism. Well, the man in the street and the and the parents have been injected in this now in such a way that they're going in without without a lot of knowledge, and people are scared and they're angry. And they're, they're they're bringing this up to their politicians, and I think what's happened, and we've all heard about, you know, during COVID, parents looking over their shoulders, their kids' shoulders when they were home, and they're saying, "What are you teaching my kids?" And then the mama bears and the papa bears got involved, and the whole thing just took off. So that's where kind of where we're at, just as a top level. Now, of course, there's a lot to CRT and a lot of the tenants that most people don't even understand. But when it comes down to the parents, um, it, it's become a fight. You know, okay, I can actually have a conversation with you, Captain. So, critical race theory, you and I would agree. Critical race theory, not what they say they want it to be, but actual critical race theory as an analytical, advanced level. Um, framework is not taught in K through 12 education. No, Did it's you not. and I agree. Okay, I, I, I totally agree on that. I totally agree, and, and that's that was one of the big things that came out. If you look at it, if you study it, even it just peripherally, if you look at the top level, you go K through 12 kids wouldn't listen. They're that's not right. Be interested now, in Captain. All right, my man. Yes, K through 12 education has no connection to critical race theory as an analytical framework of advanced study. I learned critical race theory in a doctoral program in 2016, okay? It was one way to analyze social science or social data. That's what you did, you analyzed it, you come up with a reverse engineering model to find out why a dysfunction or maybe inequity exists. That's what it was, it was, it was actually boring stuff, okay? <laughs> right. And then, and then something happened, Captain. Um, Donald Trump and a few others, decided to start saying critical race theory is the boogeyman. And I've said this for years, Republicans are great at messaging. And what they would do, what conservatives have mastered, is the ability to make you believe in the boogeyman. And they say, this is the boogeyman. And they're also great at picking out personalities that should be heroes. So they say, this person is a hero and this is the boogeyman. And now we don't have to talk about policy because we have you in fear over here and we have you motivated over there. And because of that dynamic, we can dismiss policy conversations and start passing legislation and solving problems that don't exist. This whole critical race theory thing and K through 12 education was not spearheaded by educators. My mother is a K through 12 educator. It was not spearheaded by educators because this was not a problem. So my question to you, Captain, mm -hmm. with that being said, it being established, K through 12 educators do not teach critical race theory. It has been proven survey after survey of educators. This is not what we teach. How do you, end up pushing back on the narrative of conservatives when you're right. Parents are the ones who got involved in this conservative by and large. And they pushed the legislators and governors to create these anti CRT bans in education. 
when CRT is not even taught. And remember, in your state, what they really did is they made parents a de facto regulatory agency, giving them the ability to sue if they feel as if a school teacher is teaching critical race theory. So how do you push back on that, Captain? Well, first of all, I, I think there might be a factor on that. They did exactly what you said, and that was the recent bill that was dubbed incorrectly, don't say gay. There okay. was a prior bill to that. Oh, that's true, that's correct. There was a prior bill that, and that didn't give the parents. But here, and, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because for the, this has been blended together now. This has been blended together. And you said something that I, I found very important. Your, uh, you have family members who are involved in K through 12. I have a sister who is a teacher. I'm one of these people. I go out, I talk to people. I don't, I don't want to go on, you know, if you all you do is watch cable news, you're going to be dumber every day. So the problem is a lot of people maybe don't have the time. So I talk to educators, K through 12 educators in Orange County and Polk County and Osceola County. And I ask them, what's going on? Is CRT as a discipline being taught? And they told me, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. But, but the output, and some of the ideas of CRT that if you hit, let's say when you studied it, you took that and brought that down are being put out. And I think this is this is one of the big problems that I have with CRT okay. is that the proponents of CRT have been saying, and just like you and I just agreed, it's not being taught as a discipline, but then there are educational materials that are being sold, that are being used, that will put some of the tenets and boil them down for K through 12, and that's being taught. And here's what they should have done. The last thing you wanna do, the last thing you wanna do is go out and do something behind somebody's back. If you want, if you want those, those ideas to be taught, go to the school board, be on the school board, Push for that and say and present it in a correct way and say, look, this is something I believe that children should hear. And then that needs to become part of the curriculum. But you can't push a curriculum, and this is where all the I see all the problem happening. It wasn't actually officially part of the curriculum, but it was being taught. And when the parents caught wind of that, they said, wait a minute. I thought my kid was learning math and science and history, and now you're you're teaching a, and, and here you go teaching an ideology and an indoctrination. And those are the words that okay. those are the words you talk so about. Let me let me push back on some of that. Sure, um, absolutely. So first, let me go to Senate Bill 148. Senate Bill 148 uh, is what I was referencing as the as part of this anti-critical race theory uh, yes. movement, and Senate Bill 148 in Florida would allow people to sue uh, employers if they were uncomfortable with race or discrimination training inside of the workplace. But what was interesting about that, right, and what's interesting about that is that it actually came from the education committee um, in the Florida Senate. And so that's what I was referring to about uh, being able to sue people because of critical race theory. But you're right, the parents were the don't say gay bill. So let's go back to something you said specifically, Um, curriculum, okay? I spent some time as a high school teacher. You actually get to submit the curriculum typically to the principal and the principal approves the curriculum. What you're qualified to do is teach a subject. All right, that's what you're qualified to do. And these subjects are allowable under the overall curriculum mandate of the institution. For example, you if you are qualified to be a history teacher, and in that teaching of history, you teach the reality of the KKK or racism. Well, Mm -hmm. that's perfectly allowable because we trust our educators to do that adequately. Let me take you to Texas, okay, because I want to know your thoughts about how Texas decided to do this. Sure. Uh, There's a Texas bill, House Bill 3979. And in that Texas bill, it said that teachers, public school teachers are no longer must teach that the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan is morally wrong. Uh, So one, it was a requirement to teach the KKK in Texas. They passed the law, said "Uh, mm, no more of a requirement. You don't have to teach it anymore. And then they added to the bill, Captain, 
But if you do teach it, you cannot, and I quote, this is what the bill says, okay. give deference in the teaching. And you know mm -hmm. what that means, that means you yeah. can't say, hey, the KKK is wrong and the people that fought against them were right. That is a miscarriage of educational justice, brother. That's what that is, Captain. Would you agree with me on that? That I do agree with you. And and here's here's the problem, and, and you just nailed it on the head. One of the problems is that when you aren't talking, when the two sides aren't talking, and when you find out something you didn't know before, and then you've got all this misinformation, instead of writing a good bill, you go too far. Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in the First Amendment. Now, schools aren't First Amendment, okay? Mm -hmm, right. But I do believe in a truthful education. Every kid, I got a truthful education. There was nothing hidden. And that's what needs to be out there. So we got to make sure when these when these bills are passed and in, in whatever state they're passed, they don't go too far. And there's good definitions on it. But I didn't know about the Texas bill. I'm very surprised. I'll have to look that one up. That that surprises me, but I agree, you don't want to go too far with those. But I think what you do have to do, what you do have to do, and we, you talked about the curriculum and, and you were a teacher and you've got a lot of experience here. But what you do have to do, and what's becoming, a, the, the drum is beating very loud, is that parents own the children and not the schools, and that's really what's driving a lot of this right now. So we're gonna have to be careful on both sides how we handle that. But uh, they do own the children, that's their kids and they can they can send them. I went to a Catholic school and I was, you could call it indoctrination, but I learned the Catholic religion and I learned my values that way. And if a parent wants to send their kid to a school, I believe they have the right to do that. Yep, and, and listen, they do have the right to do that, Captain. But also remember, public schools are funded by the public. They and are. because of that, we have to agree to some common sense things. Saying that critical race theory is taught in K through 12 education just because a teacher teaches you know, about racism. is like saying that calculus is taught in the first grade because a teacher is teaching about math. Those two do not conflate. And, and you know that, right? And I'm glad that your voice is part of the, the movement in Florida. If we have more people like you that can talk sensibly to these issues, Florida and this country will be a better place. So Captain, thank you for being on the thank show. Thank you, doctor. I hope to be back. Yes, sir, you shall.